Hello, I'm Lola, and welcome to the video tutorial where we'll use the daily plugin for Bubble and Bubble to build a bare bones video chat app. In this tutorial, we'll be going step by step using no code technology to build a video conferencing app. Let's take a look at that finished product first. It's a video conferencing app specifically designed for quick chats. With our web app, users can create a video call and share the link with their friends. No downloads, accounts, or logins are needed. However, the video chat will only be accessible for 10 minutes since our app is specifically designed for those quick live video chats. If someone is in a video chat room, they can continue talking after the 10 minutes, but they will not be able to rejoin the room after that time expires. You'll really want to tune into this tutorial if you're interested in building virtual events apps, distance education, telehealth, fitness apps, all without having to code. For this tutorial, you'll need a daily account and a bubble account. So if you don't have those set up yet, go ahead and register for both. We'll be building everything in bubble, but you'll be using the daily API key to provide the video conferencing capabilities. Daily provides real-time video call APIs to shorten the development time of video chat apps. And Bubble is a no-code development platform for creating web apps. We'll use the Daily plugin for Bubble, which wraps the Daily APIs in a Bubble-compatible module so you can decrease the time it takes to make your video and audio conferencing ideas a reality, all without code. Let's get started. Once you are set up, you'll sign into Bubble and then select Create New App. We'll fill the form with some information about the app. This helps Bubble understand what users are creating on the platform. Feel free to share whichever details you'd like. You'll want a unique app name that isn't already used by another Bubble user. You'll be able to connect a custom domain to the app later. Once you've filled out the form, then you'll select Create a New App. We'll wait for Bubble to load, and while we do, we can sign into Daily, so we have that tab ready when we need it. Heading back to our Bubble app, we can select Start from a Blank Page, Close the Assistant. And now we are in our Bubble Editor. Let's install the Daily plugin for Bubble. This plugin lets you create and manage video call rooms, live stream, manage participant access rights, and embed Daily's pre-built video call within your Bubble app. We'll head to the Plugins tab, click Add Plugins, then we'll search for Daily Video Conferencing and Chat. You'll want to make sure you're installing the official version of the plugin. Keep an eye out for the animated icon. Then we'll hit Install, and then Done. Next, we'll grab our Daily Account API key. We'll head back to our daily window, and in your dashboard, go to the Developers tab and copy your API key. We'll head to the API key slot and type in bearer, and then paste our API key. The bearer in front lets the server know that what follows is an API token. Now our plugin is installed, and we can make use of the daily plugin actions and data calls within our Bubble app. Let's explore what those are. We can view a list of rooms, details about a specific room, and meeting information, which returns information about all audio and video sessions on our daily account. We also have a few actions. You can join and leave rooms, start and stop live streams, create rooms, create meeting tokens that control room access, update rooms, and delete rooms. With our plugin installed, now let's move on to design. Let's switch tabs to the Design tab. All Bubble apps include an index page. It's the home page of our app and will be what the users first see when they visit our app. Our index page will have a few elements. Header text, a Create a Room button, some text for our link, and a group to hold data for our link, which we'll set up later in this tutorial. Let's drag our elements onto the page. We'll drop a text element onto the page and select H1 heading dark for the style. Let's edit this style so that it's always center aligned. To do that, click Edit Style 
and then choose the center aligned option. We'll switch tabs to design. Let's change the text to start a room and update the size of our text box so we can view the entirety of our element within the bubble editor. Then we'll add a button and change the button text to create a room. We'll add another small text underneath the button and edit the text so it says room link and we'll add a colon. We'll also update the text so that it's center aligned, select edit style, and then choose the center aligned option. Let's switch back to the design tab. We have our elements on the page. Let's arrange the spacing. We'll select all of the elements on the page, hit arrange, and then center them horizontally and distribute the elements vertically. Next, we'll create a group on the page. Groups are elements that contain other elements. A group has two roles. It can gather elements from a visual perspective, which enables all elements to move together. A group can also have data injected into it and the elements inside the group can refer to the parent group's thing. We'll put our link text into a group so that later we can inject the right video call information when we share our links. To create this group, select the element and control click, and then select group elements in group. We'll head over to our element tree, uncheck only show hideable, Select our group A, which is the group that we just created, and we'll change the name of the group to group link, so it will be easier for us to reference later. That's it for the designs on the index page. The next page we'll add is a room page, which will be our page for accessing video calls. For now, all we need is a blank page. So you can head to the pages up top, click into the page, and select add a new page. We'll update the page name to room and leave the clone from field blank. Then we'll select create and that's it for the design. Let's switch back to the index page and set up the workflows in our app. Workflows consist of two parts, an event and one or more actions. Events are the parts of the workflows which tell Bubble when a certain workflow's actions should run. A click of a button is considered an event when a page is fully loaded, that is also considered an event. If you're curious about what else is considered an event, we've included a link to a list of the predefined events in the description below. Actions are the steps that Bubble should take when an event is true. Actions can do all sorts of things, from logging users in, to hiding and showing elements, to adding functions from plugins, like our daily plugin for Bubble. When a user visits our app, they will select create a room, and when they do, it will create a room in daily. Then we'll want to share a link for the user to copy to be able to access that room within our bubble app. The clicking of the create a room button is an event. We will start a workflow for this event that creates a video chat room, and then we'll display that link. To get this workflow started, we'll select the create a room button and then start slash edit workflow. We'll search for daily, create room. In our actions property editor, there is some language about what the action does and a few parameters that we can set up to customize our action. For our create a room action, we have the privacy settings with options public and private, whether to enable screen share, whether to enable chat, whether to make our video room an owner only broadcast, which will make it so that only meeting owners can share their audio and visual, whether to enable knocking, which for private rooms means a user will need to request access to a video or audio room from a room owner, some options for enabling recording, which is a feature that's available for scale plan users, when the room should expire, and the language for the room. If you forget what an action or a parameter does, you can check out the description text on top of an action or click show documentation to learn more about the parameter and what inputs it accepts. We can leave the parameters as is except for our EXP setting. EXP stands for expires. Since our app focuses on quick conversations, we won't want new users to be able to join video chat rooms after 10 minutes. 
we want to have an automatically expiring room, so this parameter needs to have a value. Our exp parameter requires a Unix timestamp. Unix time is used since it's independent of time zone. The room will expire at the same time for everyone without us having to do any time zone conversions. To set that up in Bubble, we'll add some logic to our parameter, starting with the current date slash time. This time, we'll capture the time that this workflow is run. We'll add 10 minutes to the time since we want this room to expire in 10 minutes, and then extract the Unix timestamp. Bubble returns a Unix timestamp in milliseconds, so we'll need to divide that number by 1,000 to get that number in seconds, which is required for daily. If you forget about that, don't worry. You can always select Show Documentation on any parameter within any of the daily plugin actions to learn more about what's required. Before we set up the rest of our workflow, let's preview our app. Click Preview. We'll give the app a moment to load. And in our previewed app, select Create a Room. Let's head to our daily dashboard to see what happened. We'll switch to the Rooms tab, where we can see more about the rooms we've created. Looks like we have a room that was just created. Let's click into that room. And some of the settings we put in our workflow action are captured in our room. We also have this daily URL, which is the link for the video room that we'll want to embed within our Bubble app. Let's switch back into Bubble. We have the first step done where we will create a room. It will create that room in daily. Now we want to show our users a link to access that room from within our Bubble app. We'll need to do some quick database work in Bubble in order to make that happen. So let's switch over to the Data tab. The Bubble database helps us save information that we want to store and retrieve later. The database consists of multiple parts. Data types are tables of data where each row represents a single object that has one or more data fields. A data field is a single piece of information about that object. For example, we won't need to use it in our app, but Bubble automatically gives us a user data type. Email, modified date, created date, and slug are all data fields or pieces of information about our user. For our app, we'll need one data type. Let's call it video call. And we'll use this data type to save information from daily about the rooms we create. Let's create the data type. We'll head to the new type box and add video call. We won't worry about the privacy settings for now, and we'll select create. We'll add a field to our data type. We'll select create a new field, title it URL, and make it of type text. This will be the same URL that we saw within our daily dashboard when we created a room. We'll save the URL so Bubble knows which video call to embed when a user accesses a video call. Looks like we have a video call data type. Let's head on over to the app data tab to explore this further. We can see our two data types actually have data tables. And now we have this video call data table. If we select the pencil icon, we can view all the fields that are within this data type. Data types in Bubble come with some pre-made fields like the created date, modified date, slug, created by, and the unique ID, which helps us identify a single row of information in our table. Let's move on. We'll hit cancel since we didn't make any changes to our view and switch over to the workflow tab. Let's go to our create a room workflow. We'll add another step so that we can store the information that we get from creating a room with our plugin. To store that information, we'll need to create a new thing in our database which will create a new row of information in our database. That thing we create will be that video call data type. We'll select set another field, URL, and for the URL, we'll reference the result of step one's URL. This will make it so that whenever we run a create a room action, we'll always save the information for the room we just created. Let's preview our app. We'll let it refresh the changes, select create a room, Switch back to our bubble editor, data, 
and then go to our app data tab. We can switch our views to refresh our table. Nice, now we have a new entry in our video call table. Looks like we saved a link. Let's pop into our daily dashboard and into our most recently created room. Cool, it's the same link. We've created a video room. We've saved some information about our video room, but we haven't actually displayed any new information to the user yet. Let's go back into our bubble editor. We'll hit the design tab, go over to the element tree. You'll see the group that we created called group link. This group will hold our text element with a link to our video call, as well as some information about the call we create. If we'd like, we could send our users directly to the URL that we get from daily, which would be hosted on daily site. But in our case, we want to embed the video chat directly in our application so that users stay on our site. We'll set this group data to type video call so it can accept video call information. We'll leave the data source empty. Now it's time to set up our link since there's not currently a link displayed for the user to copy. To do that, we'll click into our group to select text room link. We'll click into the text box and after the room link, we'll select insert dynamic data. The dynamic data will make sure that we're generating a different link every time we put new information into our group. We wouldn't want users accidentally jumping into someone else's video call. Select website home URL, which is our base URL, and the link to our index page. This URL already comes with a slash at the end, so we'll just need to add room to the URL. Adding room to the URL will direct our users to the room page. After that, we'll add a slash, and then the parent group's video calls unique ID. Adding the unique ID to our link is part of the step that will make it so that when we put this link in our browser, our app will be able to access the right row of video call information in our database. So we have our room link. Since we made some changes, let's preview our app again. Okay, nothing appears after the slash. That's because we haven't sent any information to the parent group yet. Let's do that. Heading back into our bubble editor, create a room workflow. We'll add our final step in this workflow, an action to display the video call data that we saved in step two of our create a room workflow to our group link. This action will send the information from the video call data type that we just created and saved in our database into our group link. To do this, we'll select add an action, display data in group slash pop-up, select group link as the element, and for the data to display, we'll do the result of step two, that item we just saved in our database. Let's switch to our design tab. Since our text link is inside our group link, the text link will be able to access the same data that we just sent into our workflow. The last bit here is to add some conditionality to our group. Conditions control how page elements behave and appear under certain circumstances. You can add conditions that affect the visibility of an element on the page or its data source or even its background color. In our case, we don't want users to see this room link text if there isn't a video call link for them to visit. In our element tree, we'll select group link, and in the conditional tab, we'll add a condition that when this group's video call is empty, the element is visible. And we'll leave that unchecked. Now, our group will only be visible after we've created a room and sent data through our workflow into that group. Since our text is inside our group, that won't be visible either. Let's try it out. Select preview and let your app refresh. Okay, we don't see the room link text anymore. Let's select create a room. Nice, we have a link which won't do anything just yet because we haven't set anything up on our room page. So let's do that. Go to the top drop downs and click into it to open up your pages. We'll select the room page, which will be the page our video call links direct our users to. When a user visits the room page with a unique ID in the URL, we want it to immediately open up the correct video call. To begin to make that happen, let's 
click on the page, make sure we are in the appearance tab in the properties editor, and set our room page to type video call. Now our page can accept information from our video call data type. We'll switch tabs to the workflow tab and select click here to add an event. Let's choose a page that is loaded. Then we'll click to add an action and search for daily join a room. Our daily join room action joins video or audio rooms that we have created on our daily account. And depending on the room style we choose, overlays daily's pre-built onto our app. In the properties editor, we'll add current page video calls URL to the URL field. Since we just made it so that this page is of type video call, when we visit this page and have a unique ID specified in the URL, we are able to access fields about that row of video call data in our database. We have a couple of styles to choose from. All options except for audio only use Daily's pre-built video chat, which comes automatically with features like grid and speaker views, a pre-join call UX, and participant views. In terms of where on the page our video will show, we can choose full screen, which will occupy the whole page, a bottom right room style, a top right room style, and an audio only style that won't have a video or UI component at all. Let's choose full screen for the room style. We also have this meeting token parameter. Meeting tokens help set room access and participant details. In our app, we don't need any special participant access, so we can leave that meeting token field empty. If you'd like to create a meeting token, you can do so with the daily create meeting token action in this plugin. That's it for creating the workflows on the room page. Let's preview our finished app to see how it works. We'll head back to our index page, select preview, then we'll select create a room, copy that room link and paste it into the browser. Nice, we can enter our name and then allow access to our video and microphones. Great, we are in our video chat room and we can share this link with friends for our quick video chats. And that's it. This tutorial was an introduction to the daily plugin for Bubble, but you can do a lot more than what we covered today, including private rooms, live streams, webinars, you name it.